Hey everyone, this is Dr. Maples. We're back to talk about research questions. Now today we're going to think about taking the average research question and trying to make sure it's sociological. This is a really exciting step for an undergraduate sociology major, and I want to make sure that you feel comfortable with that. I mentioned this idea a little bit too in my previous lecture of thinking sociologically, and hopefully that'll overflow into this one. Maybe you're already thinking about that. Now, if we take our research questions, they're often very interesting, but um, they occasionally have nothing to do with society. In fact, we'll see a couple of examples of questions like that. Um, in other cases, they really go into other fields as opposed to sociology. And as sociology majors, we want to make sure we fix that. A couple of things to think about when you're trying to take a research question and um, a non-sociological research question and bring society into it, bring the sociological thought process into it. Um, a couple of useful tips that I always try to think about when doing that um, starts with taking individuals um, who are experiencing this idea that you're studying and try to think about how they experience society differently um, based on this idea you're studying. Likewise, you could try to think about how this idea that you're interested in uh, is experienced different for a particular group in our society. Um, that takes you into lots of sociological realms. Um, you could also think too about how your um, uh, like the social trends or the um, ch social change that's happening um, can shape certain outcomes that relate to your idea. Um, we'll explore these ideas in a little bit. But these are just some basic ways where we're trying to take a question and bring the society into it. Now, in these next couple of slides, we are going to look at some good examples and bad examples. I've marked the bad examples as such, so you won't have any trouble figuring them out. I also, in this lecture, will occasionally, oh, in upcoming lectures, I'll occasionally use just um, question example and then sometimes sociological question example. It might say soc example. Um, just to kind of give you a sense of a question going from like a basic question but to a sociological question. So keep those in mind. Um, now a couple of things to keep in mind when you're dealing with questions, sometimes you just go right outside of sociology with them, um, getting into things like morality, um, too into the individual without thinking about the collective individual's experiences, uh, or even history. I'm a bad one for that. Those are things immediately that can turn into very non-sociological questions. So that gives us a really good starting point. Likewise, too, basic descriptive questions, um, like what does blah look like? They don't really make for sociological research either. But we're going to look at how to fix some of these issues as well. I do want to say that the textbook has a really great table on this, so feel free also to rely on that table. Um, but I've tried to create new examples um, through this lecture so you don't see the same ideas that they were using. All right, so let's start by keeping in our, our lane, so to speak. Sociologists aren't really focused on morality questions. Um, a really good example of a non-sociological and morality-oriented question would be, should Eastern Kentucky residents send their kids to college? Well, you know, that's close to being a sociology question because we could easily bring society into that. But we're not interested in the morality of should things happen or should they not happen. We're interested in trying to understand how the individual experiences society, society in relation to these things. Um, and in fact, that word should, I've italicized that because that gives you a hint really quickly that you have um, some morality stuff in there. We're going to leave that for the philosophers and the moral moralists, um, but that's definitely not our field. Now, what we could do to reframe that question could be what are some of the societal barriers that shape, shape parents, <laughs> that's hard to say, what are some of the societal barriers that shape parents wishing to send their children to college? That's kind of changing how this question um, was phrased so that now we're dealing with social things, social barriers. Uh, we could also ask, too, if people experience it differently, right? Do certain groupings of Eastern Kentucky residents show weaker support for sending their children to college? Yes, they actually do. In fact, we see uh, household income can be a really big predictor of that. But, you know, in a statistical analysis, we might also find things like high school performance could uh, impact that. These are now sociological questions. We've gone from asking a moral question, should something happen, to now asking how the individual and society kind of experience this differently. So we're moving in the realm of trying to think again about bringing society into our questions, making them part of the thought process. Let's explore some other examples. Now, one of the common things that happens because um, psychology is um, uh, related to sociology 
uh, we often see some overlap there with students. And with psychology questions, they're largely thinking about the individual's experience and nothing else. They think about the individual, um, but they sort of isolate the individual from society. We no longer think about society changing the relationship. It's just thinking about the individual. So one of the common things that I get are questions from students that are very individual oriented, but there's no social element to that. In fact, let's look at an example of that. This is probably a pretty decent uh, psychology question. Uh, that would be what do Kentuckians think about when applying for college? Now, you know, it's so close to being a sociological question, right? There's different ways we could take this. We could think about how individuals experience that process differently, how groups might experience this differently, or what forces happening out there might shape that outcome of people thinking about college to begin with. But here they're just asking kind of this very individual question, you know, what is it that in Kentuckians are thinking about? For us, that's probably not a sociological question. We want to add society in there. So watch what I do below. Uh, I take this topic of Kentuckians thinking about applying to college, and I could ask, what are some of the social barriers Kentuckians might experience when applying for college? Social barriers. Now it's a sociology question. Now we're going to think about what's standing in the way, which maybe that's what they were going after with their original question, and that's okay too. We're just making sure now this is a sociological question. Likewise, um, what are some of the social barriers which might shape perceptions of education? Now we're dealing with uh, sociology here. We're dealing with society in this. One other version that I didn't include here of individual questions um, are occasionally research questions where you think about highly individual specific experiences, maybe something that you as an individual have experienced and you want to understand um, like how other individuals are experiencing that. Sometimes that can be a sociological question, but every once in a while, if it's a highly specific experience, like you're trying to do a study on, um, you know, why banjo players might hold their banjo a certain way like you do, it's probably not sociological. But it also might not be a psychology question. I'll leave that for their research methods class. It, either way, just try to think about how you are actively going to bring society into your question, and you'll be all right couple more examples. Let's think about history. Now, I am the worst at this because I think history is a very valid part of sociology, but not everyone would agree with me. I often bring the idea of history into uh, my sociological interests, and this is, in fact, one of the reasons that I've sometimes told that's a great research question, but it's not a sociological research question. And I'm okay at that because I have a PhD and I'm pretty confident in the work that I do. I'm okay with just being told I'm a historian from time to time. Like my current book, but it's got sociological theory in it, so it's sociological. <laughs> Anyways, thinking about history, we want to make sure we don't just ask um, historical questions. A good example of a history question would be, um, how long has racism existed? It's, it's interesting. That's a totally valid question. How long has racism existed? That's a valid question, but it's a historical question. It could be a history of society, and that could get some sociological elements, but it's truly a social um, idea that we're looking at the history of it. If we wanted to turn that into a more sociological question, we might ask something like, how do migrants experience racism when moving to the United States? That's a sociology question. We're thinking about how different groups experience society in different ways. Does that get to your question of how long has racism existed? No, but we could bring some historical ideas about migrant trends and talk about how they've experienced that differently over time. In fact, that now becomes a sociology, sociological study that's a longitudinal study. We'll talk about those a little later in the semester. Um, what if we also ask how migrants cope with racism through social organizations? This could be, again, taking your interest in racism and now making it into a sociological question. Likewise, you could replace any of these groups and try to understand how lots of different groups experience racism or even how they learn ideas like racism. But we're stepping away from how long has something happened? What's the history of this? Where did it come from? It could be interesting. It could be a little part of your paper, but it's not going to be a sociological question. So we want to steer clear of it and frame our stuff in terms of sociology. Now, the one that students make the most mistakes on is certainly the descriptive question. 
This is a common mistake. And it's really because you're still exploring these ideas. In fact, I've left the previous example as a good example of this one because the history question on the previous slide was also a very descriptive question. And I wanna show you how it's not sociological. So a descriptive question, you're simply asking, what does blank look like? Um, what's the story of blah? Something even like, how many divorces happen amongst military families uh, in the United States? That's a great question, but it's actually not sociological. It's just a simple, straightforward, descriptive question. I can give you a statistic and you'll be like, oh, great. But that's not research. That's just a statistic. 37%, 12%, 19%, I don't know. But once you have that statistic, it's done. We want to understand what shapes those experiences. So we go back to our history of racism question. This is a very descriptive question that we're asking here. How long has racism existed? Or where did racism come from? How do people experience racism? Those are descriptive questions. They aren't really sociological questions because again, we're trying to think about how society can be brought into thinking about the formation of your question. For example, going back to um, this idea of the, the history of racism, we can talk about how different groups experience racism differently over time. We could talk about the individual experiencing things differently in society because of being a particular race. That's where we're starting to bring in the sociology. Going back to my military divorce example, um, what variables might shape military divorce? What might cause it to go up? What might cause it to go down? What social experiences shape that relationship? That's a sociological question now. The thing that I'm hoping that you can get at with these four examples that we've talked about is try to think about where society fits into your question. If you're not sure if your question is sociological, try to think about that. Is this a question where people experience things differently or this experience shapes individuals' experiences over time or even because of this event that their lives are shaped over time? Try to think about those relationships. It's gonna make you a stronger researcher going forward. But fair warning, it takes time. It's not something you're gonna do overnight necessarily. Try to think about it now and as we work across the semester, I promise you'll get better at it. All right, that's it for this part of the lecture. In our next lecture, we're gonna think about our ideas and look at some other ways that we might improve our sociological research questions. I'll see you there shortly. Thanks, see ya.